Magic Kingdom tips. And shh, these are a secret. <gasps> the beans. <gasps> We're spilling them. Oh. oh. Yeah. I see what yeah. you did there. No, we're spilling Okay, yeah. I got yeah. it. Are you rope dropping Tron right now? What are you doing? Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> Wait a second. Do you guys really not know this tip now? No, what? This is actually I mean, brand it's, new. It's a new tip? Oh. Brand new. No way. You're gonna wanna This whole video is, yeah. is about new tips, Quincy. Oh. We have to. <laughs> You're gonna we're, wanna rope drop Tron. Rope drop what? Tron? Yes. We're rope dropping Tron. But you can't rope drop Tron. There you, isn't even a step. Ha ha. I know something yeah. Emma doesn't know. Incorrect. <laughs> Guess what doesn't have a virtual queue anymore? Tron. We gotta catch up to her. Tron no longer has a virtual queue. This means that line, imagine it. That line's gonna be crazy. So why don't you rope drop it to hopefully avoid it? I can't say anything because I have a tip that piggybacks on this. Whoa! Now, this is a major all ears change because typically, nine times out of 10, we're gonna tell you rope drop Adventureland. We like to start with the Jungle Cruise, we like to start with the Pirates, or even sometimes, Reed Love will talk about rope dropping Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which we have found to work in the past. We're erasing all of that for now. You can, you can still do whatever you want. But this is now another option. Four options. Four options. I did the math wrong, I think. Three options. And I can't count. I'm a theme park expert, not a mathematician. That's a great point, and I say that too. I, me, me as well. Also not a mathematician. Not a mathematician. But I do want to tell you that the day that we're filming this is the day that this news has come out. Yeah. So we literally adapted, rewrote our entire shot list for you to have the most up-to-the-date information, and this is cutting-edge technology. That's what it is. And if you follow the allears.net blog, you probably already know about this. That's right, because this was filmed a little bit of a while before you are launching. And you should follow the blog. Follow the blog to get up to the moment. Info. Yeah. These are tips which never get old. Now I will say Tomorrowland is traditionally open for early entry, essentially meaning that resort guests are definitely going to want to go for Tron or Seven Dwarves Mine Train, but for a little bit, probably Tron. It's going to really help you get ahead of those long wait times that are going to be later on in the day, and if you're waiting earlier, means you're not in the heat. Even the non-resort guests can actually benefit by rope dropping Tron to kind of get ahead of all of that, and I think it will be totally worth it. Tron's new standby line is going to destroy rope dropping as we destroy. know it. Destroy? Yep. Destroy. Yes, and we've got to stick together and get through this. And you know what we're going to do? What? We're going to go to a Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, and I'm going to tell you why. Ooh! What are you thinking right now? This is crazy. I'm thinking that this is pretty crazy that we're going to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train right now. Right? Well, it's like, what two, could be happening? It's like a piggyback and also a little bit different than even the first tip. Why so are like you two tips. Behind my back. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm trying to give you cool tips. No, we love no, 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 it. No, we love the tip. No, we love it. We love really your good. tips. This is a good tip. This is a good tip. Yeah, I can't wait. We're just saying, hard like, hard this is so I exciting. Really hard with my brain. In Tony's Town Square. <laughs> it hurt. If you were staying in one of the resorts that allowed you early entry into Walt Disney World, we recommended that you start your day rope dropping Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. If you were not staying in one of the resorts, then we recommended that you rope drop uh, some of the Adventureland rides, like uh, an another ride that has very, very long wait times throughout the day, Jungle Cruise or Pirates, which is definitely a classic and a favorite of many, and definitely those, those weights can get up there as well. Now everything's changed because this new queue. There's a standby queue over at Tron, which is revolutionary. Previously, the only way that you could ride it was to join a virtual queue or purchase a single pass lightning lane reservation for it. But now, no holds barred. If you walk up to this ride, you can ride it <gasps> as long as it doesn't break down. I digress. If you're not staying at a resort that allows you to do early entry into one of the Walt Disney World parks, we now suggest that you rope drop Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. That's because it's still going to be one of the most popular rides in Magic Kingdom. So you might as well wait in the queue that is forming, but not as long as the queue that's formed, probably over at Tron, because all the people that do have- They're gonna be at Tron. They're gonna be at Tron. Yeah. 
genius. This is genius. This is breaking news. You're this literally the one that told me that. She's a really this, good actress. She's genius. He's genius. <laughs> Everyone here is genius. I'm so shocked and odd. If you're looking for other ways to ride Seven Dwarfs Mine Train throughout the day, when the fireworks start, come get in line here at Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I recently tested this when I had a friend in town and I was just enjoying Magic Kingdom. We got in the queue during the fireworks and 25 minutes is exactly what it was. All right, it's time for my tip. Oh, good. Got, I'm writing it now. Do not stress the Lightning Lane conundrum. Mm. Disney World killed Fast Pass. It murdered Genie Plus. And now it's body swapped both of them. I know, it's violent. It's body swapped both of them with the new Lightning Lane Multi Pass and Lightning Lane Single Pass. Totally new system. And yes, another new system to learn and another new system to stress about. Is it right to spend what can be a lot of money to get this for my family? I'm stressed. Don't throw up. Okay. She's gonna throw up. Don't throw up. <laughs> no, I can feel the stress. Please, you said not to though, right? Yeah, do not throw up. Okay. Now, Lightning Lane Multipass is a system where you can purchase one date-based and park-based fee and skip up to three lines, book up to three Lightning Lanes at a time to skip lines throughout your day. If you want to learn more about this, I've got a full crash course in the system on the channel for just 15 minutes. And I also have videos in every single park getting every single Lightning Lane in one day. So, I'm your Lilu Multipass of Disney World. I've got you covered. Oh, I know, I know you were worried. I was, I was getting worried. But this system can be really, really expensive to use. One day, I purchased Lightning Lanes for three of us to go on single pass attractions and multi pass attractions, and the fee was upwards of $200 for one park day for three people. I know, hey, hey. Get it together. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was like it was a lot. It was a lot of money to be able to use multi pass in a day for three people. Now, what I'm telling you is to not stress the decision. If you want help making a decision, we absolutely can help you out. I've got all of my Lightning Lane guides on the channel for you to see how it works and if it might be something that's right for you. And we will be doing new ride challenges in every park without Lightning Lane to show you that you can get everything done without using the Skip the Line service. But that's exactly my point. No matter what decision you make, whether that decision is driven financial or by ease of use of the service, whatever it's driven by, do not stress that you've made the right decision. With all your strategies, we can hook you up and make sure you have the best Magic Kingdom day, whether you have multi-pass or not. I feel like I can finally breathe again. I know. Thanks. You have more tips? I've got two more tips. I you have so many tips in my pockets. My pockets are overflowing. I have tips in my pockets. We're gonna have to. Split up. We are gonna have to split up. We're gonna have to split up. What? Yeah. Listen, no, gang. Never mind we're splitting up. Tips. Daphne, Velma, you take the attic. Scooby Doo, Shaggy, Whoa. the basement. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I'm Fred. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> Bye. <laughs> One of my most controversial tips is going to be do not go to the park. Yeah, I said it. Don't go to the parks. And you might be thinking, Emma, this isn't new. I've heard you say this before. And if you have, welcome back. And if you haven't, just hold on. Follow me. So yeah, don't go to the Disney parks, but only for some of the days of your vacation. Because honestly, after going to Disney World three days in a row, you, you love it, it's so much fun. Uh, but honestly, on the last day, I'll say it, I'll be the one bold enough to admit it, you're kinda over it. You're having so much fun, but you are thinking about going to sleep tonight. And you are thinking about the fact that maybe you can get in that comfy Disney bed and be a little bit done with it. And you're thinking, Emma, that's not true. But even you know it's a little bit true. I mean, just taking a pool day, going to Disney Springs and chilling out. And if that means skipping a park, that means skipping a park. You've been to Magic Kingdom a bunch. You're going to have gone on most of the rides. You're going to be doing most of the things. So if you need to skip Magic Kingdom for this trip alone, I get it. This year, what I'm recommending is skipping Animal Kingdom. Starting in fall 2024, we are seeing tons of changes coming. Specifically, Dino Land is going to be about as extinct as the dinosaurs in it, which is so sad and so I, I can't get into the details. But if you want details, you can check out Quincy's D23 video up on the channel right now. That being said, Dino Land is a huge section of Animal Kingdom, and sometimes might be worth it to skip it. I'm going to say give those animals a break and give your own dogs a break because I can hear them barking and y'all are a little bit tired. It's fair to want to speed, speed, speed and maximize your trip, of course. And that's kind of our whole shtick is you want to maximize. However, it's good to remember that at the end of the trip, you unfortunately still have to go back to work and your body's going to thank you for that single day you spent laying by the pool instead of being chased by a dinosaur or going to Neverland. 
or seeing a purple dragon or finding Aerosmith's free VIP concert tickets. There is no decent breakfast in Magic Kingdom anymore. Yeah, I said it. Here's how to survive. All right, let's get down to some real talk. Inside Magic Kingdom, breakfast? No. As a plant-based eater, uh, I've never had a good time. I've never had an easy time. I, I can't find anything to eat. So if you want something for breakfast, here's how to do it. Rope drop. Go ahead and enter the park when, uh, when it opens and hit your top rides at rope drop. Then escape the breakfast wasteland by hopping on the resort monorail or taking a boat for a quick service meal that'll actually fuel you up. And this is a quick service meal at one of the area resorts. And you have some of the best choices right here around Magic Kingdom. My top recommendation, Captain Cook's at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort for the Tonga Toast. If you're surprised by the fact that they have the plant-based Tonga Toast, I was too. I just found out last week. That's why I'm so into it and it's such, such a fresh thing in my mind. And if you're not feeling the Polynesian vibes, no problem. You can hop on a boat to Wilderness Lodge or Fort Wilderness. Uh, Roaring Fork at Wilderness Lodge is an amazing quick service uh, restaurant. And over at Fort Wilderness, you've got Trails End that has very solid offerings throughout the day. So that's definitely something I recommend no matter what restaurant you choose it it's a quick service restaurant so you're gonna be getting in and out faster than you would at a table service restaurant and back in Magic Kingdom in plenty of time to get the rest of your rides and attractions done and you'll be full on a delicious breakfast that you actually enjoyed and you also won't be getting up so early that you're trying to eat a full breakfast someplace outside of Magic Kingdom before you rope drop the rides because that's definitely not happening for me anymore. Now, don't tell the others, but I think this is the best tip in this video. It's one that's very near and dear to my heart and very important. That is to know when to hop out of Magic Kingdom or know when to skip Magic Kingdom altogether. Now, crowds in Disney World have become notoriously unpredictable since the 2020 park closures due to COVID. Since then, it's been a whole lot harder to say when Disney World will be busy, when it won't be. And Magic Kingdom is perhaps the biggest culprit of all because this park does tend to get the busiest. I mean, look at what I'm looking at right now. Look at all those people. And it's not even that busy today. Now, Magic Kingdom is amazing. It is so much fun and it is a must do on your Disney vacation. For many, it's their favorite park and it's certainly the flagship park in Disney World. But sometimes you're gonna wanna skip it. And what I mean by this is when you are planning your park days, you really want to take a look at the schedule for the parks. The easiest way to do this is to check the park hours calendars and look at what time the park closes and if there is a specially ticketed event li listed on the park hours calendar. You absolutely want to use park hours to pick what days you're going to be in what parks because you never know when a park might close early or when you might want to hop to a different park and it might have wonky hours. Always, always, always check those park hours for your trip. With Magic Kingdom, this is especially important because Magic Kingdom is home to more after hour events than any of the other parks. There are more holiday parties here, they still have extended evening hours, and they have after hours events in 2025 as well. So when you're planning this trip, make sure to check those park hours to see what events have cropped up during your trip. This can be a total lifesaver when it comes to crowds for two reasons. Reason number one is that on days that Magic Kingdom closes early due to a specially ticketed event, the morning and early afternoon will be some of the slowest that you will see Magic Kingdom at any time. I mean incredibly low wait times for shockingly popular attractions. But that flips on its head starting around 4 p.m. For most specialty events, admission works starting at 4 p.m. in the evening. And that means that all those folks who did not have admission to the park during the day will show up right around 4 to enter the park. So everybody who was already in Magic Kingdom gets added to by all those people who are now showing up. And that means that for those last few hours of the park day, Magic Kingdom will be slammed. So get out of here, blow this popsicle stand. Go ahead and head to one of the other parks sooner rather than later so that you avoid the transportation lines and some of those massive crowds. If you don't have park hopper admission, you can also just skip Magic Kingdom altogether on those days. Or it might be great to have some of those slower wait times in the morning, but you can also have a great day at another park and not have to worry about all the hubbub of the specially ticketed event in the evening. Where are the buttons? And I don't mean on your shirts. Well, where are the buttons on top of your shirts? But the buttons on your shirt, where are the buttons? Hold on. If you are celebrating anything, birthdays, celebrations, promotions, being alive, 
get the celebration buttons in Disney or the birthday buttons or the anniversary buttons. There are four different kinds of buttons that you can get for free in Disney World in any of the parks or Disney Springs. Birthday, celebration, anniversary, and your first trip ever. They're completely free to you and you absolutely should be getting these on your trip. Recently, I spent some time with one of my best friends, Reagan, on her Disney trip for her birthday. And of course, we made her get a birthday button. You kind of have to, it's free, you should. Well, I knew that, you know, cast members always love to say like, hey, happy birthday, or, you know, kind of give you a special little shout out. But the amount of pixie dust she got on this trip was so rare and so special. And it was all because she was wearing that birthday celebration pin. Quincy and I wear the celebration buttons anytime we do a cross country challenge. When Quincy and her brother went on a siblings trip to Disneyland, they wore the buttons. When my friend Daisy got her job promotion, she wore a celebration button. We love finding reasons to celebrate in Disney and you absolutely should too. Wearing the buttons just gives cast members a little bit of a heads up. So that way, if they're able to give you a little bit of pixie dust or a special shout out, they're going to. Get your shopping done early or prepare to wrestle a grown man for a pair of Princess Aurora mini ears. All right, here's the move if you're at Magic Kingdom on a party day like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party or the upcoming Christmas party. Hit up Main Street retail early in the day. In fact, I would even recommend hitting it up on your way out of the park to grab breakfast to just piggyback on our earlier tip. Why not pick up your items that you know that you're gonna want, do a little shopping, or when you're coming back into the park, you can go ahead if you're upset about the idea of having to carry things around all day, which I completely understand. I always tell people to ship them, especially if you have an annual pass. The thing you don't wanna do is wait until the very end of the day usually 6 p.m. for guests who don't have tickets to the party. When you have that many people entering and going shopping right away and you have that many people leaving and also going shopping, the stores a lot of times are busier than I see them like after the fireworks on a regular night in Magic Kingdom. So that's something that you definitely want to avoid. Psst. come here. Listen, listen. I've got another tip for you and I'm sure the other two are telling you some really amazing tips, but this one is really important, so you're going to want to hear it, but you'll see I'm in front of something quite quite controversial in, in the news lately, and that is the Liberty Bell Riverboat, the Rivers of America, and Tom Sawyer Island. Now, according to Disney, all of this is getting taken out and replaced with a new Cars section of Frontierland. It's going to have two attractions, both a Radiator Springs Racers style attraction that takes the cars to the American West, and a smaller attraction for little racers. Concept art looks really cool, but it does mean losing these very iconic parts of Magic Kingdom. And people are up in arms about it. If you want to see how people are really feeling about this, you can check out my video where I talk about people's reactions to the news. It's called They Are Destroying Magic Kingdom, Other Opinions on the New News. So go check that out if you want to learn more about what people are saying, because woo, it's brutal out there. But my tip has to do with these beloved attractions. And that is, get it before they're gone. Liberty Bell Riverboat, Tom Sawyer Island, Rivers of America. We know that these three things are going for good if all the plans pan out as Disney has expected. Now, what I wanna share is that if you are coming to Disney World, do not assume you have more time to get these things just because we haven't heard a closure date. There are two reasons for this. One, a closure date might come very, very close to when the thing will close. For instance, with the Lightning Queen Racing Academy show that's closing over in Hollywood Studios to make way for a villain show, we heard that it's closing and it's closing like next month, very, very soon. So you might not make it back once they do announce a closing date. And once these things have official closing dates, that is when the crowds will really start to come for them. All those folks that want to come and say goodbye will come and say goodbye when that official closing date is announced. Right now, there's no closing date, so people don't feel like they have that urgency. That is when it's time to come and say goodbye to these popular attractions. Come get some pictures the way Magic Kingdom was. Come ride the Liberty Bell. Come explore Tom Sawyer Island before they're gone for good and before Disney says when they'll be gone for good because that is when the crowds will come.
And it's not just the Liberty Bell and Tom Sawyer Island that you need to be concerned about. We also know that the new Villains Land is coming beyond Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And though Disney hasn't announced this, we have a pretty strong guess that this is going to once again close the Walt Disney World Railroad for an extended period of time. The reason we guess that is because Villains Land will be going on land that is outside the circle of the current railroad. And that means they will have to build pathways or some type of access to get over to Villains Land beyond Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, which means likely they're going to have to adjust the train track again. We saw this attraction close for a very, 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 very long time with the construction of Tron Light Cycle Run. Too long, if I do say so myself. So come and get that last ride for a while on the train. Do it before they announce that closing date for the train. So keep an eye on our social media as well as the blog for the to the minute updates about these new additions. And then we'll also talk about them on YouTube, of course, sharing all the strategies and tips for navigating what might be some pretty big construction walls. Definitely take some pictures. That's something that I'm like, wow. I need to have pictures in my camera roll of the, of the Rivers of America before they're gone forever. I'm feeling a little anxious because we spilled so many secrets to you guys today, but we want you to have just as much success in Disney World as we do every single time. So stick with us. We've got your back. We will make sure that everything is easy for your Disney trip as long as we can help it. I guess I'll go find my friends. Hopefully they've been spilling some good secrets to you too. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go check out 15 of our sneaky secrets all about Lightning Lane Multipass. We'll see you there. Bye! Bye.